Hi everybody, um, today I want to demonstrate how to make a two-piece pot. I'm going to throw a two-part vase, um, and I'll show how to throw each part, how to stiffen them, when they're ready to attach, and how to do that. So, enjoy! So I've got clay already wedged up here. Um, I'm just making the pad for my bats right now. I've got two eight pound balls. And um, as far as I can see, like that's a good threshold for when a pot should turn into a two part pot is like around the around the ten pound mark um, is when you can really get I think better results by breaking your work down into sections. Um, if I were making a 10 pound pot, pot, I probably wouldn't bother, but if I were making a 12 pound pot, I'd probably break it up into two sixes, that kind of thing. Um, it really just makes things a lot easier. You're not working as hard while you're throwing. Um, you're able to get the walls thinner so your clay is going further, which makes the pot lighter in the end. Um, I think it I think it leads to an increase in quality. So got my bat here, um, got my little my little cooking aid. There we go. Going to firmly attach that down. So this is going to be a vase. Um, this is my first time using this clay. This is reclaim I made um, that I amended with some fire clay. So I hope it's plastic enough to to really work with. In the center. Um, because I'm sm throwing smaller components, um, and they don't have to have quite as much strength on their own, because we're going to stiffen them before we put them together, um, I can use softer clay. And um, this having been reclaimed, I usually, I usually make my clay pretty soft if I have the ability, you know, if I'm reclaiming. If I'm just buying it, then, I mean, it comes as it comes, but... Uh, Reclaim, I can determine the stiffness, and I actually like softer clay. It's less work. So, there you go, that's centered. I'm going to open, I'm going to make the bottom first, and then I'll make the piece that goes on top. And so the top piece is going to be a little bit narrow, or I'll, I'll talk about why that is. Um, so, again, I'm going to use my technique that I use for making large pots, which rather than to draw the whole mass out, I'm just going to take my thumb and forefinger, my thumb, forefinger, and index finger of my left hand, and I'm going to cut across the bottom of the lump of clay, leaving the thickness of the bottom behind, and that makes for a much easier, easier opening move. When we throw the second piece, we won't leave a bottom, because it will become the top of the basin. So we won't actually want any bottom thickness. We'll just go right down the back. So. Get my compression in. Make sure that that bottom doesn't crack. I am 
noticing that this clay is using a little bit more water since I added fire clay to it. It's more porous, it absorbs more, more water. So, um, I'm not going to do heel of the hand lift. If it were bigger, I would, but I'm going to go right in with my knuckle over here. And do my first pull. And I'm going to stop a little bit short. I'm just going to leave a nice thick rim. I'm going to get my little uh, ridge started. And I'm a little bit above that ridge with my inside hand. And, um, the second pull, and I am going to thin out the rim a little bit, but it's still still a good bit thicker than the rest and um, I'm, I'm finding that there's a there is a chunk in this clay but I think I think we can tolerate it I think we can work on it no nope. where is it where is it and what is it it's not clay it is it is a wood chip Probably off of my wear boards. I dry my reclaim on wear boards on my studio shelves rather than using plaster bats because having plaster bats is just owning another object. I think I'm not sure that they really greatly improve the process, and I'd rather just not have them have an extra thing kicking around. Um, but there's a downside to where if you don't have really nice smooth wear boards, occasionally you get a little piece of wood in there. I'm trying to use as much of this clay here from the base as I can. I'm trying to get my pots nice and light. Not so thin that they're weakened. Don't want that. But, uh, okay, so, here we are, here's, here's the bottom piece, I'm going to thicken this rim, I'm just pushing down with my finger here, and thicken that rim some, uh, but I don't want any sharp edges. And now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take my, my tool here, this is, this is kind of optional, you can just put two flat pieces, two flat joints together, slip and score them really well and they will stick um, and you probably won't have any issues but I like to make a little a little joint between the two so they really they really interlock I think it makes for a better a better joint so I'm gonna go like this get a little bit of water and I'm just gonna make a little um, I guess it's a gallery kind of thing A little V groove, and then my other piece will be a little bit um, will be a little bit pointy. Kind of screw that up a little bit. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Right. Clean it up with a sponge even though it's going to get ribbed over a bunch of times. Alright, and so the very, very last thing that we care about with regard to this piece is the diameter of that figure. So I'm going to measure center to center. We have an unknown number of inches because my tape measure is covered in clay. Alright, we have Seven and one eighth inches, and it's fairly important to get that accurate. This is not one of those things where you can go, "Oh well, it's, um, you know, six and three quarters." We'll just make it fit. It, they have to be the same. Um, I'll show that in a second. So, all right, we're not going to wire that off yet because we're going to be using it. So, 
this one is going to be more cone shaped, more inverse cone shaped than it is cylindrical. That's very cylindrical. That's about, that's about enough. Don't want to go too wide because that that bottom portion is going to end up being the bottleneck of this base. So now, finishing the first pull. And so I'm saving this attachment slip on the edge of my uh, my edge of my water bowl here. Sometimes I even put it in a separate container, especially if I'm going to do a couple um, a couple pots. This one I'm gonna go about quarter inch thick with the rim. One more pull. I'm leaving a bit of clay down towards the base because that's what I'm gonna make the bottleneck and all that stuff out of. So I'm not going too nuts on that. I want to preserve that strength there so that I have material to throw with. So, seven and one eighth inches to the center, which we're like pretty much darn near perfect in that regard. Need just a little tiny bit wider. Yeah, that's perfect. And so now I'm gonna make this rim a little bit like that. It's important now to take off this excess clay down here at the bottom because you're going to be re-throwing this. So you want to make sure that you have a round place to start from. Um, and if you can, reach down on the inside and scrape up some of the excess as well. I got it fairly, fairly good down in there, fairly even. There aren't anything like lumps or bumps or extra clay on the bat or anything like that. So I'm going to leave it. I think we'll be able to work with it. Um, but all right. So this is staying on the wheel and I'm going to torch this with a weed burner. Then I'm going to pop it off and put the base back on. And we're going to torch the base as well. So And I'm not going to torch a lot down there. I'm going to torch mostly the top two thirds. Just hit the hit the inside a little bit. I feel like that's stiff enough.
Yeah, that's good enough to avoid collapse. Um, you want to still be able to deform it. It's still, it's even still tacky. Um, it's just got like a bit of a skin on it. Is the best way that I can describe it. It's kind of um, no longer squidgy. Is the way that I would describe that consistency. All right, I'm gonna center this back up. sit out and stiffen. Let them sit lightly wrapped in plastic overnight. Set them out in the sun and rotate them often for an hour or two. Or probably in Colorado less than an hour. Sure. That's probably about good. a little bit. Alright, so, um, I didn't really torch the rim here a whole lot, because I want this to stay decently wet because it's going to become my joint. So I'm going to score it with a needle tool, like so, and I'm going to apply slip to it. And really, if you can use slip, don't use water. Um, it just works better. There's nothing wrong with using water. It'll do in a pinch. But you want slip. So, I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm just going to score it a little bit all around the top. Could have done this what was on the wheel. That would have been way easier. want to get as much um, slip down inside this v-groove that we want it to basically be enough for two for both sides of the join all right so there's the reason we didn't wire this off is now we're going to take this and we're going to let it hang from the bat in order to position it on on top of our bottom piece and you want to get it centered. You, do, you want to get it in the right place the first time. You don't want to be shifting it around um, while, you're, while you're working. So now I'm going to show the bat cutting technique. <laughs> I'm going to have the, my chest resting against the front of the bat. See so if you can see that. Yeah, I'm going to move my chest forward so it's touching the bat. Like so, I'm going to be pulling back with the wire and keeping the whole thing from falling over as I cut the bat off. So, now they're, now they're placed on top of each other. The whole thing's got just a slight wobble to it, but it's not bad at all. I'm going to trim this little excess bit here. That's what I could have trimmed from the inside before, but I didn't. So I'm going to trim it now. Take that out. And so now I'm going to get on the inside with a rib and use my fingers on the outside to uh, smooth over this joint. That's the first thing I'm doing. And I'm pushing the little V-groove bits up to seal around the 
the kind of, I guess, sharpened portion of the joint of the top piece. Switch the rib to the outside, and we're just going to smooth that all over. And as we work over this joint, you know, shaping the pot, the joint will get stronger and stronger as it, as the clay particles get pushed together. And so I'm gonna wet this whole thing on the outside. Gotta get on the inside with a sponge and wet it all out. I want to shape it now, and if there are any dry spots, you start to pull things off center. So just give it a slow spin and just pull as you would normally. It's not, not wet enough. Not even close. I'm not trying to do too much at once, especially because there's so much weight on this right now that I don't want to um, like stress it. easier on an electric wheel where you can just kind of set the pedal to a speed and kind of forget it. But uh, I happen to have an electric kick wheel because I think it's better for most of what I do. Um, so I just have to kind of occasionally stop and re... And there's always going to be, or there usually is, I should say, a joint on the inside. You're not going to get this to where you look down on the inside of the pot and you're not going to see where they're, where they're alluded together. going for kind of like a big old bottle shape. Like a big old Catherine Bovary bottle or something like that. Furs are much more graceful in shape and stature than my work will ever be, but yeah. So there we go. Thank you. 
Hmm. Wind's picked up outside, just blew a piece of plywood over it. Head leaning up against my uh, firewood pile there. That's what that's what you heard in the background. So I'm going to uh, throw this top in. Start to make the bottle form. Let me see what, if that's within the uh, shot of the camera here. Yeah. Looks like it. Just coloring that in some. Alright, we're going a little fast here. And I'm going to try to get some height out of this. Just because the clay is a little uneven and I want to make sure that I can trim off the uneven thickness at the top. When you start working bigger, um, off-centeredness is just becomes a fact of life, rather than a like, let's say, a mark of poor craftsmanship. It just like things become become a little bit off-center just because there's so much going on and there are so many components and. It's more about learning how to deal with it than it is to... It's probably also a good analog to life right there. Life's never going to be perfect. But, uh, you, learn, you learn to deal with it? Is that, is that, is that the right way to look at it? Alright. So... I get to decide how I want to have my bottle rim. I think I'm going to go in just a little more. Make this kind of a really decorative form. Get a nice thick rim on there. I kind of like these uh, sharp edged rims for some reason. I don't know why. I think that they like glazes break really nicely on them and uh, I mean I, I never make the edges raggedy but I always give them a little bit of a, a little definition I'm just going to give a little bit of a wobble because I like that kind of thing alright I think oh yeah don't do that I'm just going to adjust the shape a little here back inside it. Now I just totally um, changed the shape of that neck when I was putting my hand down inside there, but I think we're gonna recolor it and re-repair it. But just know that when you're doing that kind of thing, you've got kind of one shot at that, or may maybe two if you're really you're really being ambitious about it. Um, you really don't want to stretch your luck too far, you know, literally and figuratively. All right. think that's done. I think that's done. I'm going to stick off the bottom here. Clean that up a little bit. Hit it with the rib. Kind of clean that up. And that is how you make a two-piece bottle base on the wheel. Thanks for watching.